Well, I wanted to talk about this wonderful principle that we see in the Bible called expectation, the power of expectation. You know, we, we had a, a wonderful opportunity to have Dr. Sizer here two, two weeks ago. And we saw this wonderful flow of the gifts of the Spirit. How many of you know what the gifts of the Spirit are? These, these, this, is a, this is the dispensation in which we live in where he said, in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And he went on to say, your sons and daughters shall prophesy and old men will dream dreams and young men will have visions. In other words, we're de- we were designed in this dispensation as children of God to live in the supernatural realm that we are naturally supernatural. Do you hear me? Because of the life of God that's in you. Right. And so we, saw, we see these wonderful gifts of the Spirit. There's the word of wisdom. There's the word of knowledge. Brother Sizer operated quite a bit in the word of knowledge. You, you notice this? That he'd just go down the list and just uh, word of knowledge, word of knowledge, word of knowledge. Okay? Uh, th- there's discerning of spirits. You know what a discerning of spirits is? If Satan is trying to hamper or to hinder a situation, sometimes you'll just uh, step over into the realm of spirit and, and see what's hindering your, your life or, 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 or have a vision of angels. You see it quite a bit in the New Testament, in the book of Acts, where there was discerning of spirits. There's tongues and interpretation. There's prophecy. There's diverse kinds of tongues. There's, these are the utterance gifts. But we saw also last week or two weeks ago uh, the power gifts. And, and that's what Jesus operated a lot in his ministry, where, where we had special faith in, in operation, where he was raising the dead. We saw, we saw workings of miracles and gifts of healings. Now, the reason why I'm saying this is, is so many times as children of God, we relegate those to other people that might be super spiritual or anointed. And we're waiting for other people to do what God is waiting for you to do. Is to allow the Spirit of God, who is the same Holy Ghost that rested upon Jesus when he was baptized in the Jordan River. Do you remember this? Jesus, before this time, he, he did not uh, do any miracles, signs, or wonders. He wasn't raising baby birds from the dead and, and parting his bathtub water and walking on, uh, on it. He, he was just like you and I, but, but, but when he uh, was baptized, the Spirit of God came down and, Jesus, and the Father said, this is my beloved Son whom I'm well pleased. And from that moment on, we see Jesus doing the supernatural. Now, these gifts are for you and I. And the reason why I say this is, is I found this to be true. That many times uh, we're waiting for the Spirit of God to move and he's waiting for us to expect these gifts of the Spirit. Now, if you'll read 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14, I think five times he says eagerly desire, eagerly desire, eagerly desire spiritual gifts. In other words, in order for them to manifest, we have to first begin to expect. Everyone say expectation. expectation. Place a desire upon it. And it's for, it's for the church. It's for you. It's for me. It's for all who will expect. Amen. And so we're designed to see a move of God. Brother Hagin used to say this when I, when I worked there at Kenneth Hagin Ministries. He was my father in the faith for years and years. Uh, before he went home with the with Lord, he said, over 60 years of ministry, here's what he saw. He said, I'd go into churches and they say that the pastors would say, we've been pray, praying for years that the gifts of the Spirit would be in, manifest, in manifestation in our church and nothing's changed. And Brother Hagin said, you can pray for, for, for years and years and continue to pray, but until your church begins to expect them to manifest, they will not manifest. In other words, what you begin to expect, that's what will show up. Amen. It's amazing. The power of expectation. And so I want, I want to take some time and talk about expectation to kind of get your gears rolling in the right direction so that you'll begin to expect yes. and put a demand on that which belongs to you. I cannot tell you how many times where, where a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge has prevented disaster from coming upon me or my family. Yeah. Knowing thing is, things in advance before they would happen so I could prepare. Knowing how to pray for church members. Yeah. 
You know, so many times I'll be up here preaching and I'll, you'll have a, a word of uh, a prophecy and you just, you roll it right into your message so that no man gets glory. But there's specific words that the Spirit of God will begin to unfold and unveil that will help and change lives. But in your own personal life, you can, you can have these things operating. But it starts with expectation. How many of you are expecting great things? How many of you want to be different in this last day that we live in? God placed you here for such a time as this. He didn't put you in the Old Testament. He didn't put you in the dark ages. He didn't put you even in the, in the days where Jesus walked on the earth. Why would God put you right here? God must have saw something because he's, a, he's the master planner. He must have saw something in you where he goes, okay, I'm going to put them right here at the very end because I have a purpose because I saved the best for last. Can you hear me? All right. So there's a saying that goes like this. You probably heard this. Don't expect anything because then you won't be disappointed when it doesn't happen. Has anybody ever said this? I don't want to get my hopes up. Okay, here's, here's, here's the thing. If you don't get your expectations up, there's a good chance you will be disappointed. Because Satan has sold the, the, the church a bill of lies. If you don't get excited, if you don't get your hopes up, it's going to be okay. It may not happen. At least you won't be devastated. Okay, that's an unbelief statement. Basically, what you're saying is I'm planning for the possibility of it not coming to pass. And nowhere in faith does, this say, does, the, the, does the Bible say, believe, but there is a slight possibility that it will not happen. Is that, is that right? No, all things are possible to them which believe. And so when you have the word of God on the subject, you can keep your expectation strong no matter what the opposition says. Can I get an amen? amen. There's, a, there's a story of a, a town in the mid, middle of the country that was uh, suffering tremendous drought. And so they, after months and months, they finally got desperate. They said, let's all come together and pray. You know, a lot of times we save, we save prayer for the very, very end. None of you guys do this. Of course, you're people of prayer. And so, so, so finally they all get together. They come to the gymnasium there at the school, the local school, and they fill it up on a Wednesday night, and it's full of people. And the pastor gets up there with all these farmers and, and people in the community. He said, how many of you are expecting rain when we pray? And everyone's like, "Woo!" They raise their hand. They're all expecting rain. And then he said, let me ask you a question then. If that's the case, how many of you brought an umbrella with you tonight? And out of all the hundreds of people, there was one little girl in the front row. She had a little red, red, red umbrella. She held it up. She said, I'm expecting. And I think so many times we say we're expecting, but we've deceived ourselves. We're not really expecting. Because have you ever thought about this? If God said... If Jesus said, when you lay your hands on the sick, they shall recover, what's stopping you then from being bold and laying hands on the sick? Because this thought will come. Well, what if they're not healed? You see, that, that tells me this, that we're putting the responsibility of the, the manifestation of the healing upon us. It's not our job to heal them. It's our job to lay hands on them. It's God's job to get the job done. It's his anointing that, do, that does the work, right? And, and I was listening to a minister the other day. He said, you know why people don't give? He says, because of unbelief. Because if they truly believe that the word was true, that when you give, it will come back good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. He said people would be giving with no questions or no qualms. He said the reason why people don't tithe is simple unbelief. They don't believe that God will rebuke the devourer. They don't believe that 90% is more than 100%. I don't, I'm not, I'm not, you guys are great tithers. I'm just saying, here's, here, here's, here's the thing. If we really expected it to happen, why wouldn't we just do it? Amen. Amen. So there's two types of expectation. There's positive and negative. Positive and negative. Now, because we live in a natural world, this world is geared towards the negative. In fact, Satan's the god of this world, and his natural influence is negative. In fact, the moment that Adam and Eve sinned, the negative influence of the world began to spread around the world. Okay? Everyone say negative. negative. So here's, here's the thing. If you're, not, if you're not being intentional about creating a positive expectation, you will naturally gravitate towards the negative. There's a constant current of the negative pushing against your life. And so you're going to have to be intentional about being positive. Now, now, I want you to think about this. Have you ever heard this? Someone gets a bad diagnosis from the doctor, 
And the doctor says, now you have this X, Y, Z, whatever it is. And because you have this, now you can begin to expect these things to start happening. Your hair's going to fall off. Your fingernails are going to fall off. Your, 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 uh, you know, whatever it is. It's all, all these things are going to begin to happen. You can begin to expect these things. Wait a minute. He's trying to get my expectation in something that's not good. It's negative. And if you watch Satan and everything he does, everywhere you look, it's negative indicators. It's in my, you know, you see it, you see it on the commercials. You saw, you know, this, these, these medical commercials. Anybody have seen any of these? Unbelievable. Your eye, you're having trouble blinking. We got extra, extra, extra dinophil. You, you, can, you can take extra dinophil and you can blink, blink freely. There's one for dry eyes. Have you guys seen this? But, but, the, but the, the, some of the side effects for dry eyes is death. I'm sorry. I'll take the dry eyes. If I had to choose between death and dry eyes. So anyways, the indicators is constant negative. It's constant negative. We live in a negative world. But there is a heavenly substance that we can glean from that is not influenced by this natural world. God, Jesus said this, pray that we'd have heaven on earth. Yes. We can expect to have the same benefits in the kingdom of heaven operating in our own lives. Now, sometimes we have trouble with that, but why? You don't have any trouble with the fact that someday when you get to heaven, you're going you're gonna to have perfect health, right? And, and you're going to be blessed financially, and you're going to have peace, and you're going to have wisdom, and you're going to have joy. Why can't we uh, uh, put a demand on that to have it right here on earth? heaven on earth. So what is expectation? You guys, anybody, anybody you ever thought about this? What is, what is true expectation? Well, I'll tell you what it is. You don't have to, you don't have to answer. Okay. If you turn to Hebrews 11.1, 1, Hebrews 11.1, 1, it says this. It says, now faith is the substance. Everyone say Substance. That tells me this, that faith actually has a substance to it. Right. It has power to it. It has strength to it. It has substance. It's the substance of things hoped for. Now, I want you to remember this phrase, hoped for. It says, uh, the evidence of things not seen. That tells me this. It doesn't matter what you see in the natural, as long as you have faith. Okay? For, the, for by it the elders obtained a good Testimony, or another uh, uh, translation says, a good report. In other words, in the middle of your crisis, you can have a good report that's contrary to what you're seeing or feeling or experiencing. You can have faith. Yes. And it's not dictated by what you see. Right. So it says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. So this word hope, the definition of this word hope is a confident expectation. Everyone say confident expectation. So the root of faith, or you may say it like this, the very beginning, the first ingredient for your faith to work, it's all rooted in what you expect. It's what you hope for. It's what you're confident in. Okay? That's the beginning place. If you want to bake a cake, what's the first ingredient you'd probably put in that cake? Flour. Right? That's an ingredient, but that's not the cake. It's a part of the cake. This is what hope is too. So hold your, hold your britches there. We'll talk more about how to, add, how to add to that hope. Amen. So then it also means this favorable and confident expectation. It also means this joyful. Everyone say joyful. Joyful, joyful and confident expectation. That means this in the midst of your waiting, you're not down and depressed and grumpy and yelling at your spouse and ah, I'm, I'm, I'm striving, but I'm really upset. No, it's joyful. In other words, in the midst of the problem, you can go, ha, ha, God's got this. Amen? Amen. So this word hope, there's, now there's two words that, that we're going to look at today that are the, the very similar for hope in the New Testament. The first word is E-L-P-I-Z-O. E -L -P -I -Z -O. Uh, that's how you truly pronounce it in the Greek. Elpizio. And it means this. It means that confident expectation. But here's what I want you to know about this. It's a verb. Everyone say it's a verb. So what does a verb do? A verb, a verb means there's action attached to it. 
So if you've got something that has no action, then it's probably not functioning the way it should function. In other words, if you're not doing something with this word, it's probably not working in your life. In other words, you're going to have to be intentional to be expectant. Confidently expecting. Are you hearing me? El Pizio. Okay. So the second thing I want to ask you is, is where does it come from? So if it's confident expectation, where does it come from? Does it come from the stock exchange? Does it come from your boss that says, I just gave you a raise, or I might give you a raise? No, you can have some natural hope there. Or maybe you, you see a pretty girl and she smiles at you, and hey, there's hope. Maybe, she, maybe she'll go on a date with me. See, when I saw Jill, she was, oh, so pretty. Look at her. Oh, she's so pretty. Yeah. I saw her from across the convention center, and I'm like, woo, look at that pretty girl. So hope got me around the convention center to where she was at. That's hope. And uh, against all hope, in hope, I continued to pursue her because at first she was like, no, uh -uh. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, so where does hope come from? So it's, it's not natural in its origination. It's not a natural substance. So it says here in Colossians chapter 1, verse 5, and you guys are listening so good. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Don't tell the first group, but you're actually listening better than they were. All right. So <laughs> Colossians chapter 1, verse 5, it says this. Now remember, where's hope come from? It says, because of the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, of which you heard before in the word of truth, of the gospel. So please know this, that first and foremost, that the Bible, which we call the gospel, what does gospel mean, anybody? The Bible means, the gospel means good news. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. In other words, go tell them how good I am. This is what God is saying. In other words, if they're sick, they can be healed. If they're poor, they can be prosperous. If, if, if they're dying, they can live. If their children aren't walking with God, they can come back, amen? It's good news. But this good news comes from the Bible. You're not going to open up the Bible and, he, and, and, and read where God, God's mad at you so he wants you to be sick. Or he wants you to be poor. The Bible says this, whoever comes to him, he will in no wise cast him away. In other words, he's not going to turn you away. When you look at his book, you'll find good news after good news after good news after good news. This book is full of hope. This is the book of hope. Amen. So this tells me this. If your expectation is low, it's a good indicator that your word level is low. Got quiet all of a sudden. So it tells me this. If you're not expecting much, it's a good indicator that you're probably not reading much. Amen. There's a good indicator you're probably not meditating much. But I'll say this. You begin to get in this word. It's, it's pregnant. It's full of hope. Yeah. Page after page after page after page. You read the epistles over and over again. It tells you who you are and what you can do. It's full of hope. It says this in Colossians chapter 1, verse 16 from the Amplified. I like this. Look at this. And it says, and this is the word of truth. They heard where their hope was rooted. You, you can't have a plant live very long if it's not rooted in something, Right? In order for a plant to grow, it's got to have roots in soil. In order for your expectation to be strong, it's got to be rooted in the word. Okay? So he's the God of hope. His word is full of hope. So, so let, me, let me take it a step further here. Turn to Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Romans 15, verse 13. So not only is the word of God the book of hope, but you know this, friends, God is the God of hope. Look at this. Romans 15, 13, it says, May the God of, all, of hope, may the God of who? Hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So he's the God of hope who wants you to abound in hope because we have the spirit. Everyone say the spirit. We have the spirit of hope. 
Now, I want you to think about this. You, you, may, have, uh, you may go into a time of prayer where you're, you're down or you're depressed or you're weary. But here's what I found to be true. When I get into the presence of God, when I begin to, to, to fill my spirit up and pray in the Holy Ghost, when I begin to edify myself, it's not very long where all of a sudden now that spirit of God begins to buoy up what's on the inside of me and all of a sudden hope begins to rise. Amen. I can't tell you how many times I've been laying on the floor in this church praying for members, concerned about situations, weary and tired and, and, and frustrated. But as I've spent time in the presence of God, the spirit of God begins to give that words of encouragement and hope. He's the spirit of hope. God's the God of hope. This Bible's the word of hope. And so this Greek word here, hope, is the other word that we're looking at. It's E-L-P-I-S, same root word, but it means this. It means this. It's a noun versus a verb. And it actually means this, that God is the God of hope. He's the author of hope, not the subject of hope. So, so, so we come to God, the God of hope, who always has the word. He, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans not to harm you, but plans to bless you. To give you what? A hope. Yes. And a future. Right. You hear that? Yes. So we can come to God, the noun, the author of hope. And then we can place our expectation. It's something we do to expect that what he said is going to happen. All of a sudden now, whoo, I've got hope. My situation is no longer hopeless. I don't care how far gone it looks. It's now, it's now got hope. I can stand. That's the beginning. This is the beginning of faith. This is where faith begins. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 12 says this. Now, that time, now at that time, excuse me, you were without Christ. Now look at this, aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant of promise. Look at the result of this, having no hope. And without God in the world. Let me say this, if you don't have God in your life, you have no true hope. You may have some natural hope, but listen, this is why, this is why people who aren't born again are so frustrated and they're, and they're trying to find ways to, to soothe that lack of peace on the inside. They have no natural hope. But here's the thing, when you preach the good news to your neighbor and say, listen, Jesus died so you could have a relationship with him and spend eternity with him in heaven, it creates hope. Yes. And all we need to get them to do is to act upon that hope. We'll talk about that next week. But if you don't have Jesus in your life, you have no true hope. This is the frustration you feel. This is the aggravation. This is the, I, I can't seem to get on top of this. No matter what I do, I still feel hopeless. Why? You need the author of hope. Yes. His name is Jesus. And he'll fill you with his spirit of hope. And then you can begin to feed on this word that says all things are possible to them which believe. This word gives you hope. It says in 1 Timothy 1 verse 1, it says, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandments of God our Savior and the Lord Jesus Christ, our hope. Friends, you read the epistles, you'll see this statement over and over. There's so many I couldn't list them all. He's the God of hope. And that tells me this, no matter how hopeless your situation is, there's hope. Lazarus had been dead for four days. And everyone says there's no hope. Jesus, there's no hope. And what did Jesus say? As long as I'm here, the resurrection and the life, there's hope. Go ahead and roll away the stone. I think there needs to be some people in here that begin to say, go ahead, roll it away. Let's roll away the stone. Let's go ahead and approach that thing that looks impossible because I'm full of the resurrection life. He's in me. Amen. Yes. One more. 1 Peter 1, 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, you realize this, that this hope, it's alive. We don't serve a dead God that has no power. We serve a living God that has all power. <laughs> we got hope, friends. Amen. What are you so down about? What are you so frustrated about? Listen, turn to God and let him give you some hope. Amen. And take the limits off. 
So write this down. His words begin to expand our expectation for what he wants to do in our lives. Now listen, if you don't, if you don't expand your expectations, you'll be down, you'll be depressed, you'll be weary. But listen, if you'll begin to let the word of God expand your expectations, things change. Now I'm going to close with this point, so I'm not going to be very long, okay? I know I've already been going about 25 minutes, and that's about the same length of a sitcom. So <laughs> I've actually had people tell me, you can only preach about 25 minutes. That's all the attention span that people have. I'm like, not my church, amen. Come on. So, so this last point is this. It's called extreme focus. And the reason why this is so important, guys, is because, like I said earlier, we live in a negative world, right? And so Satan will constantly be trying to get you to focus on the negative, if you're not careful, you'll have thoughts come a thousand times a day about the negative, about the bad, about the negative, about the bad, right? Anybody been believing God for something? Yep. Let me say this. There's no such thing as uncontested faith. The moment you make a stand, this is why it's called the good fight of faith. The reason why it's called the fight is because there's a struggle there. But the reason why it's called the good fight is because you win. Amen. Amen. Anybody ever gotten in a fight before? When is it a good fight? When you whoop their behind, amen, that's a good fight. It's a good fight, amen. 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 <laughs> Where was I going with that? Okay, so, so, so extreme focus. In other words, no matter what the devil tells you, I'm going to keep my focus on the word of God. I'm going to keep my expectation engaged. I'm going to keep on expecting. I'm going to keep on expecting. When it looks the opposite of what you're believing, when it gets worse, I'm going to keep expecting. Amen? So you can turn a negative expectation around simply by changing your focus. Look, let's look at a couple of scriptures and we'll turn you loose. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 17. The apostle Paul, a mighty man of God, did some great and wonderful things. But you know this, they tried to kill him over and over again. He was, he was whipped with 39 stripes three times. He was beaten with rods. He was left in the ocean for a number of days on a number of different occasions. He was stoned. How many of you like to be stoned sometime? He had a prison ministry because he was in prison. He, he, he suffered hardship, struggles. He had to work a job a lot of times on top of doing the work of the ministry. And he said, not only that, I have the constant care or worries of the church. I love him so much. I want to make sure you're okay. But listen to what he says in response to all these things. He says this, <laughs> for our light affliction. Glory to God. For our light affliction, which, what is but for a moment. I'll say this, whatever you're dealing with today, it's temporary. I, I, every storm runs out of rain eventually. And whatever rain you're experiencing, whatever storm you're experiencing, that thing is drying up in Jesus' name. Amen. He says, for is working in us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Here's what I wanted to get to. For while we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary. Everyone say temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. The Apostle Paul says you need to be intentional about what you're looking at. He said if, if, if you can see it in the natural, here's what, here's what it means. That's temporary. See this podium right here? It's temporary. Why? I can see it. There's a mountain over here called Superstition Mountains. Anybody know what that is? Okay. As big and as hard and as strong as that mountain is, you realize this, because it's seen, because it's in this natural world, it's temporary. And because it's temporary, guys, it's subject to change. That means this, you guys, how many of you have flesh? See this flesh? It's temporary. And because it's temporary, it's subject to change. So you don't look at the things which are seen. In other words, your focus is no longer on what you can see because remember, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things not seen. See, the word of God is eternal and the word of God will not change. It's eternal. You can focus on this word. It will not change. He said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will remain forever. So Abraham did this. I'm going to close with this. Abraham did this. Romans chapter 4, verse 17. Everyone say it's temporary. It's temporary. Here's, what, here's what Abraham, here's, here's, here's how Abraham, the man of God, 
got to where he was at. This is Romans chapter 4, verse 17. It says this, as it is written. Now stop here. Abraham had a word from God that gave Abraham hope. As it is written. And then it quotes what God said here. Look what he said. God said to Abraham, I have made you the father of many nations. That word right there was the beginning of his faith. Faith comes by hearing. This created expectation in Abraham's heart. Okay? It goes on to say, in the presence of whom he believed. Now look at this. God who gives life to the dead and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Here, here's a key to faith. No longer call your situation the way you see it in the natural because that's temporary. You call it the way the Word of God calls it. You, you contrary to hope in hope. You call it the way God's Word says it. And it goes on to say, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations according, look at this, to what was spoken. Again, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Now I want you to see this. Against all hope, against all hope, or contrary to all hope, in hope he believed. In other words, there was no natural reasoning to why he could be the father of many nations. If, we, if he would have gone to a fertility clinic and said, listen, I want to have a baby, he'd say, now how old are you, brother Abraham? I'm a I'm hundred. He would say, there's nothing there, bro. I think, <laughs> never mind. It's empty. It's not working. There's nothing there. If, if, he would have, if, if, if he would look to Sarah and said, now Sarah, you want to have a baby? How, how old are you? I know you're hot, but how old are you? I'm 90. In the natural, there's no hope. But to make things worse, here's a woman who even when she was young was barren. And now she's old and she's still barren. There's no natural hope, but against all hope, look at this, in hope. In other words, in the author of hope. He placed his trust in God. And he began to call those things. We're going to talk about this next week. See, add faith adds substance to things hoped for. Abraham began to call himself the father of many nations. He began to put substance to the hope. And it began to work. And then within one year, he became the father of many nations. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, I know we went a little bit long here. But Father, we know this, that, 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 that there, there are people are here, Lord, today. I believe this, that, that have, have, uh, have big plans and big dreams that are placed there by you. Lord, we know this, that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask, think, hope, or even imagine. Father, I pray this, that those dreams, the, the, the books, the songs, the inventions, the ministry positions, Lord, that those things that were birthed in their heart before the foundations of the earth, Lord, Lord, that they would pick them back up and begin to dream and begin to imagine and begin to look at the, 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 the impossible things becoming possible. Lord, we pray, we pray, Lord, in Jesus' name that you begin to expand our hope. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Every head bowed, every eye closed. You say, Pastor Dave, I heard you talking today about the God of hope. And that if I don't have hope, if I don't have Jesus in my life, I have no hope. And I've been frustrated. See, the way you receive Jesus is simple. He said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That gives you hope if you're not saved. But the way to receive salvation is not just to hope in it. Now you've got to do something with what you heard. You're going to have to respond to that. And he says, the Bible says that if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you'll be saved. And so it's simply acknowledging you need a Savior and it declaring Jesus is Lord in my life. You'll be born again. So I'm going to say a simple prayer. Let's all say it together. If you need Jesus, this is your day to receive my best friend, the one who changed my life and gave me hope. His name is Jesus. Everyone pray this prayer with me out loud. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ, the author of life, 
the author of hope. I believe that Jesus is the son of God, that he died for my sins. And on the third day, you raised him back to life. Jesus, I invite you, come into my life, come into my heart, be my Lord and my Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. We just want to say thank you for tuning in today. We pray that the word touched your life today. And we encourage you, if you're not part of a good church, get plugged in. You need a church body. If you're in the channel area, we would love to have you come visit us anytime. We'd like to shake your hand and get to know you. There's some information on the screen below. Uh, feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you. God bless you. It's going to be a great day.